Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'm going to extend on the very first PDF generation example that I created a couple of months ago. And I'm going to extend it by adding CSS into the generated PDF. I also made a video recently on uh, how to generate a PDF using Celery and SQL Alchemy and other things. But that won't apply here. Instead, I'm going to do uh, a basic extension to the original video that I made and that extension is adding CSS. So I'll start by adding just basic CSS and then I'll move on to adding something from Bootstrap. So the first thing you need to know to add CSS is that it's pretty easy to do. Really you're just passing one more argument to this from string command. And let me open up the template that I have. So unlike regular view files, regular HTML files, you can't link to the CSS inside of the HTML because PDF kit won't be able to pick it up. So instead you have to link to the CSS files through PDF kit directly. And what I mean by that is you'll have a parameter called CSS. So I'll just put it here. And then you'll pass in either a name of a CSS file or a list of CSS files. So I'm gonna create a list called CSS and I'll just put it right here. And my list will have one file in it. I'll call it main.css, which I haven't created yet. So let me create it now. And I'll just put it in the uh, root directory of my project. Typically, a CSS file will go into a static directory. But since this isn't really generating a view in a typical way, it's used for PDF generation. I don't think it's as important. But of course, you can arrange your files any way you like. So I'll create the main CSS file. And before I do that, let me run the code just to show you what happens now. I believe you have to pass in a name and a location, and then it generates a PDF for you. So I'll pass in my name and my location. It runs, it will generate a PDF in a moment. PDF is generated and I see my name is Anthony and my location is Las Vegas. So I'll close this out and I'll add CSS to it. So my main CSS file is here and that gets added to PDF kit, but there's nothing in main.css yet. But what I could do is add a simple style to change the background color of the body. This will be pretty ugly, but it will demonstrate exactly what's going on. So I'm gonna change the background color to blue and then save everything and run this again. So let me make sure my server restarted and it just did. And then I'll run the same route, so Anthony Las Vegas. But this time when it generates, it should take that CSS file and apply the styles to the HTML and the template. So once it generates, let's see if it does that. And if it works, we should see uh, an ugly blue for the background. And that's exactly what we see. So of course there's margins to it. Um, those are adjusted through PDF kit directly, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm basically focused on the actual CSS that will style the HTML file that you are using in your template. So that's what I have here. And now let's move on to a more interesting example. Let's take one of these um, bootstrap examples and convert it into a PDF. So I'm looking for something that's pretty simple that won't have any CSS or sorry, won't have any JavaScript. It has CSS, of course. You can't use JavaScript in the PDF because they're not dynamic by design. So I like this starter template. So I'm gonna take this and modify it. I have the bootstrap code here. And I don't know if it comes with the examples. It doesn't. So I'll just copy the source from here and I'll remove the JavaScript parts just to make it easy. So I'll create another template and I'll call this bootstrap.html and I'll add that. And now let me uh, get rid of anything with JavaScript in it. So uh, we don't want that. And I'll get rid of the comments too because it's just taking up space. So let me see if there's any more script tags. No. Now the next thing I want to do is take the CSS out, but I'll have to get the files for this. So let me look for CSS, so .css. I have the main bootstrap file, and I have this viewport bug workaround.css, and then I have jumbotron.css. So I'll remove this one first. And first, let me see what it looks like without, I'll take out the icon too. I wanna to see what it looks like without uh, generating it in a PDF. Just 
showing it directly. So I need the bootstrap.min and I need jebeltron.css. So I'll find those. Uh, here's bootstrap min. So I'll just move this into the template directory for now. And then jumbotron CSS. Let's see if I have that anywhere. And I do not actually. So let's see what it looks like without jumbotron. Let's see if we can get away with not having jumbotron. So I forgot to uh, change the path of the CSS. So what does it look like? Okay, that's not too bad. And this is all static. So I'll remove Jumbotron because I won't have it. And I'll move this bootstrap.min from the HTML file and I'll put it here in my generate. So instead of main, I'm going to use bootstrap.min.css. Uh, since, since it's in my template directory, I'll just put a path to it, uh, templates. And then the template name is going to be bootstrap instead of PDF. So I'm gonna to have to pass in the parameters still. Well, actually, you know, how about I just take them out just for simplicity purposes. So it won't depend on a name or a location anymore. So I'll remove all of that. But just know that applying variables inside of the template is the same as always. But for our purposes, since I'm just demonstrating CSS, I don't think that's necessary. So I have bootstrap.html in the template directory, and then I have the minify CSS. So I'll save everything and the server looks like it's still running. So let's run this and see if it generates correctly in a PDF. It's probably gonna look a little weird because it was designed for a website, but ideally the styles are still there in the PDF when it gets generated. So it's generating, output is done. And now we see how uh, it is kind of styled like Bootstrap. It's not completely 100% the same because uh, there are some styles that it can't handle. Uh, where's my Bootstrap HTML? But basically the idea is uh, it works pretty well. I mean, that's what it looks like here and here's what it looks like uh, in the HTML file. So when you're doing this, you have to make sure that the CSS you're using is compatible with the PDF. Um, obviously this is for a website and a PDF document is different, but you can see how there is some styling here and it kind of has the buttons for it, but it's just not exactly the same because it's just not capable of doing everything that you would like. Like you see, there's no project name header as well, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. So if you're actually generating a PDF, you're gonna take the time to find the style that works best for you. And that should be pretty simple to do once you already know how to include a CSS file like I've done. So that's it for this video. Um, if you have any questions about adding CSS files to PDF kit to be generated in the PDF, uh, just leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.